Did a Bigfoot really attack a party of men in the Okefenokee Swamp in 1829? Or was it all a tall tale? The answer to those questions may never be known, but the story is one of many that add to the mystery of the swamp. The tale originated near the south end of Ware County, where the line that divides Georgia from Florida passes through the Okefenokee. In 1829, the first settlers were just pushing into the fringes of the swamp. Surrounded by the stunning beauty of the swamp, they quickly picked up on an Indian legend that held a mysterious race of people lived on an island deep in the wilderness. So far as is known, this legend first appeared in print in 1806, in Jedediah Morris's book, Geography Made Easy. In his section on Georgia, Morse repeated a legend that a group of Indian hunters had gone into the swamp and become lost. When they were in a desperate condition, a party of the most beautiful women they had ever seen came to their rescue. They being lost in inextricable swamps and bogs, and on the point of perishing, were unexpectedly relieved by a company of beautiful women, whom they called Daughters of the Sun, who kindly gave them such provisions as they had with them, consisting of fruit and corn cakes. The tale as repeated by Morris continued with the women warning the hunters to flee as fast as possible to their own country, because their husbands were fierce men and cruel to strangers. These men of the swamp were said by the Creek Indians to be of gigantic stature and both cruel and warlike. The winter of 1828 through 1829 was extremely dry, and two men living on the edges of the swamp decided to explore as deep into it as they could. Accompanied by a boy, they went into the Okefenokee, and over a course of two weeks continued to penetrate deeper and deeper into it. As they explored the very heart of the swamp, they made a startling discovery of gigantic footprints. The length of the foot was 18, and the breadth 9 inches. The monster, from every appearance, must have moved forward in an uneasy, hesitating gait, his stride from heel to toe being a trifle over 6 feet. The men, as newspapers of the time noted, had seen enough. Ending their expedition and retreating out of the swamp, they related to their friends and neighbors what they had seen. The story excited the curiosity of a party of hunters who lived just across the Florida line. Nine in number, they went to the swamp to find the mysterious giant. They were guided by one of the members of the original party. Following, for some days, the direction of their guide, they came at length upon the track first discovered some vestiges of which were still remaining. Pursuing these traces several days longer, they came to a halt on the little eminence, and determined to pitch their camp and refresh themselves for the day. The expedition was described in detail in newspaper reports, published in February of 1829. Those accounts indicated that as the hunters were discharging their guns to reload them with fresh powder for the night, a wild animal charged their camp. The next minute he was full in their view, advancing upon them with a terrible look and ferocious mien. Our little band instinctively gathered close in a body and presented their rifles. The huge being, nothing daunted, bounded upon his victims, and in the same instant received the contents of seven rifles. The fight, however, did not end there. He did not fall alone, nor until he had glutted his wrath with the death of five of them, which he effected by wringing the head from the body. Writhing and exhausted, at length he fell, with his hapless prey beneath his grasp. As the creature lay dying on the ground, writhing and sometimes roaring, the men who survived the attack gathered around it to make a closer inspection. The creature was found to measure thirteen feet from head to toe, and his breadth and volume of just proportions. Immediately fearful that the dying monster's cries might attract others of its kind, the hunters fled the swamp. The men who died in the battle with the creature were left lying where they had fallen. It is a remarkable story, but could it be true? The honest answer is that no one knows. The newspaper correspondent who reported it wrote that people living in Ware County on the margins of the Okefenokee Swamp clearly believed it. Either way, the story of the 1829 attack was one of the earliest written accounts of the creature we know today as Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Sightings of some kind of a large creature in the swamp 
and discoveries of large footprints continue to be reported from this area to this day. The Ozark Howler is the name residents and hunters have applied to a strange creature some say roams the remote forests of the Ozark Mountains. The reports originate from a vast area that includes parts of Arkansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. Some attribute the sightings to the presence of an escaped big cat in the mountains, but others say something more is behind them. Eyewitnesses have come forward claiming to have seen a mysterious cat-like monster in the Ozarks, a creature unlike anything they had ever seen before. The mysteries of the Ozarks are part of their charm. Folk tales of ghosts, monsters, and strange creatures in the region date back hundreds of years. Unlike the well-known Arkansas wild man of the 19th century and the Boggy Creek and White River monsters of the 20th, the Ozark Howler mystery is complicated because eyewitnesses vary widely in their descriptions of what they have seen. Some who claim to have seen the creature describe it as a gigantic cat, bigger even than a cougar. Others describe something far more monstrous, a massive cat-like beast with glowing eyes and horns protruding from its head. Most agree that it is black or dark in color. Between 2005 and 2010, the Howler, also called the Black Howler or the Devil Cat, was spotted several times. A family living north of Van Buren in the Boston Mountains of Crawford County set out trail cams after spotting what they believed was a cougar. The images they supplied to a Fort Smith television station appeared to show a big cat similar to a cougar. The problem is that the wildlife officials maintain there is not a breeding population of cougars left in Arkansas. They do concede that it is possible there might be an individual big cat living in the mountains, pointing out that they likely were once held as pets, but escaped or were turned loose by their owners. At roughly the same time as the Crawford County sightings, similar reports originated from across the border in eastern Oklahoma. Those sightings revolved around a large, dark cat seen moving through the mountains. Other reports from near Dardanelle in the Arkansas River Valley describe strange sounds in the night, similar to the laugh or bark of a hyena. From higher elevations, witnesses reported seeing what they described as a large, stocky cat. Adding further confusion to all of this is the fact that some researchers believe the whole Arkansas Howler legend is a hoax, created by an individual intent on exposing what he considered the outlandishness of the Chupacabra reports that began making their rounds on the internet in the late 1990s. Researcher Lauren Coleman and others were able to conclusively point out that someone using multiple aliases had spread a variety of outlandish stories about the Howler on websites and blogs. So is the Ozark Howler a hoax? The answer to that question is a definite combination of yes and no. Some people have undoubtedly been involved in spreading false stories on a large scale. On the other hand, others have told stories of big cats in the Ozarks for many, many years. The most reliable accounts, like those of the sightings in Crawford County between 2005 and 2010, revolve more around cougars than they do monsters. The trail cam images taken of the creature in Crawford County definitely appeared to show a cougar. Evidence from Newton County, Arkansas, where the howler was spotted in 2011, seems to verify the possibility of a big cat or two or three or four roaming the Ozarks. The sci-fi channel show Haunted Highway focused on the Ozark howler in July of 2012. Investigating the location of the Newton County sightings, Program investigators took thermal images of an animal they thought might be the howler and also made plaster casts of paw prints found where an animal had taken meat the show producers had left out hoping to attract the howler. The thermal imagery turned out to be of a raccoon or possum, but a wildlife biologist consulted by the show intriguingly identified the paw prints as possibly being from a puma or cougar. They were too big to have been left by bobcats, which are well-known residents of the mountains. The question still remains, is the Ozark Howler a monster, a hoax, or a real cat of some type? The evidence seems to point to the latter answer. While a big cat living in the Ozarks may not be as flashy as a monster with glowing eyes and horns growing out of its head, 
The possible presence of such animals in the mountains is equally intriguing.